Hi everyone, Jamie Humphries here for Six String Alliance and today we are taking a look at the guitar solo from the Van Halen track, Panama. <laughs> October the 6th, 2020, we lost the greatest rock guitar player of all time. And today marks the anniversary of the incredibly untimely, way too early passing of Eddie Van Halen. Now, I've never been one of these people to be particularly affected by uh, the passing of musicians or movie stars or other celebrity. I hate I hate that word celebrity, maybe people in the public eye, maybe people that I enjoy watching the movies, listening to the music. But when Eddie Van Halen passed away last year, it was just, uh, it, it felt like I'd, I'd lost a family member. It was so painful. Uh, I can't really put it into words. I think it's because I've been listening to Van Halen since I was a young kid. And Van Halen was the soundtrack to my teenage years. It's been the soundtrack to my life. A huge influence on me musically, how I like to play the guitar. Even the guitars that I play, you will see me playing the Only Ball Music Man guitars, mainly the Van Halen, but also the Axis guitars. I've played those for... 23, 24 years now, and that's because of Eddie Van Halen. So when he passed, it, it was just incredibly sad for me, like I'm sure it was for many of you. So I wanted to do something today to mark the occasion. I wanted to show some respect to my biggest guitar hero. So I wanted to take a look at the guitar solo from Panama. Now, the reason why I've chosen Panama, I actually uh, demonstrated a Kramer guitar, my Kramer 84, a little while ago, and I played through... Uh, the guitar solo to beat it. And it was when I did that performance, it became very uh, apparent to me that Eddie is a, such a unique guitar player in the sense that he was able to demonstrate virtuosic tendencies within a pop rock style track. Obviously, some of the tracks of Van Halen were very, very heavy, but there was that commercial side to them, especially in the mid 80s with such tracks as Jump and obviously Panama. They had a kind of sort of pop rock sort of side to them and obviously as they as you get into the Sammy Hagar years uh, you, more of that style of writing becomes apparent but Eddie had the ability to still kind of play with virtu virtuosity if you like but put it across in a way that just worked in mainstream rock music and that is so unique. Now that's not to say that Panama is a straight ahead pop rock song, it certainly isn't. It demonstrates many different facets of Eddie's rhythm playing, uh, his unique use of chord voicings and some quite unorthodox chord voicings. And then slap bang in the middle of the track, we have this incredible guitar solo that also features that technique that Eddie states of uh, falling down the stairs and landing on his feet. So this song is a great example of uh, of Eddie's soloing, soloing and rhythm guitar skills. Now, Panama is actually the fourth solo from the 1984 album. Obviously, 1984 was one of the biggest selling albums for the band and boasted such singles as Jump and Hot for Teacher. And it also has other standout tracks such as Drop Dead Legs and Top Jimmy. Now, Rock legend has it that Panama was actually written in response to a journalist saying that David Lee Roth only ever wrote songs about women partying and fast cars. And it was at that point that he realized that he'd never actually written a song about a fast car. So Panama was born. The riff itself, Eddie is stated to have said that it was very much inspired 
inspired by ACDC, or should I say the groove of it, you know, the, the chorus just featuring a few straight ahead rock chords with that four on the floor kind of groove. And Eddie has also stated in an interview that I read in Guitar World that Drop Dead Legs was very much inspired by ACDC. Obviously, Van Halen toured with ACDC, and both Panama and Drop Dead Legs are off of the same album. So I, I think there's a certain amount of truth in that. We also hear Eddie Van Halen revving up his Lamborghini during the middle section of the track, just to add a little bit more uh, cool to this song. So before we get into the lesson, let's just talk a little bit about gear. Uh, I'm not too sure what guitar Eddie used to record this track, if I'm honest with you. I am guessing it's either the Frankie or it could have been a Kramer. I know that his relationship with Kramer had begun around that time and he obviously used Kramer guitars during a lot of the videos and the subsequent tours. So maybe he used the Kramers on the recording, but I, I, I'm I not too sure about that. So maybe some of you out there have that information. And undoubtedly, it was recorded through a Marshall, his famous Marshall amp. And also at this time, he was uh, using the Eventide harmonizer, or should I say the Eventide was being added in post-production to add that detuned sort of stereo width effect. Now for today's lesson, I am using my Frankie. I have got a Kramer over it there on the wall, but I had to be the Frankie for today. I'm, you know, sporting the stripes. It's got to be done on the anniversary of Eddie's passing. So I'm using my Frankie. Quite an interesting story behind this. I have told this before, so some of you will have heard this, but a very good friend of mine in the States bought me this guitar as an early birthday present and it actually an early 50th birthday present should i say and it actually arrived it was held up in customs i didn't know he was coming he was uh talking with my partner it was this whole big secret he wanted to get it through to me as i was starting doing the six string alliance stuff as well so it came through uh, early it came through last year but it got stuck in customs and then eddie van halen passed away and it actually arrived the day after so it kind of felt a little bit like you know it's all right, mate, you know, there you go. Keep playing. Here's a guitar. I know that's kind of a bit of a, probably a, a slightly silly thing to say, but I got some comfort out of this guitar arriving. I have a few people asking me about mods because I have done quite a few mods. It's got some cosmetic modifications. We got the strap hoops up here so you can put on the, uh, the EVH strap with the, with the clasps. I've also got the 1971 quarter, but there's also some more performance based uh, mods. I've got the, uh, as you can see, I've got some different, uh, I can, that's catching there on that camera, I think it is. I've got the uh, brass block, the 42 millimeter brass block FU tone. I've got the noiseless springs and the brass uh, claw and screws. And also recently I've just added some brass Floyd Rose fine tuners. I find that these work really, really well. They really help with the uh, the accuracy of the fine tuning. Uh, I've also had a shim added in the back of mine to just get a little bit more clearance when the trim is resting on the body for the detuner. It's just a, a small piece of wood that was added. And on top of that, I've got a push-pull pot on, uh, on my volume control so that I can use so we can use the neck pickup. I'm kind of gravitating a lot more towards this guitar outside of playing Van Halen stuff. It's just a great sort of super strat, fat strat style guitar. You know, it looks great and it feels great and it sounds great. Amp of choice for today. I am plugged into the Mini Rec, the Mesa Mini Rec, which I use pretty much all the time for my videos because it's just such a fantastic amplifier. And I'm using Cab Clone IR Plus today. I'm using the regular sized 4x12, I can never remember which one's which. You've got the oversized 4x12, 12, and then you've got the regular size one. So that's the one I'm using with a condenser and ribbon microphone. That's the impulse response. It's a, um, a 4x12 Mesa cabinet. But I am doing something a little bit different today. Normally, I would use the Mesa Crunch, but whilst I was in Germany the other week, my friends at Face Distribution in Germany handed me a Carl Martin Panama pedal. Obviously, the name, uh, the clue is in the name, and I thought, I'll give it a go. I plugged it in and... Uh... <laughs> 
it sounds really good. Uh, I thought I'd give it a blast and just play it uh, to give a little shout out for this pedal today. Like I said, there's no, there's no promotion going on here. Uh, it was, uh, I genuinely felt that that was a worthwhile addition to this video. So, uh, yeah, I'm just running from uh, the guitar straight to the Panama pedal and into the clean channel. Here's the clean tone with the Panama pedal. So it's got that real thick sort of British hot rodded amp tone to the pedal. Post-production, I'm adding the Eventide I think it's the H910. Uh, I'm showing my age now, forgetting things, keep having senior moments. It's the Eventide H910 plugin within the UAD for a bit of that sort of pitch shift detune chorusing. Uh, that, that means pitch shift detune chorusing for some reason. But you know what I mean, that stereo width thing. And I'm also using the Lexicon Reverb, which is also within the UAD. So let's kick things off by taking a look at the solo. And I am tuned to E flat today to match the track, although the track's a little bit in the cracks. It's not quite in E flat, but our backing track is in E flat. So the guitar is in E flat, adds a little bit more weight to the sound. The solo is based around predominantly around the B minor pentatonic. Now, there is actually a bit of this solo that I have struggled with for years and I've played it on a couple of DVDs and every time I played it the first DVD that I did it on was just horrendous the second one when I did the whole of the 1984 album I felt it was a bit better but I still struggled with that lick and that lick features these hammer on from nowhere technique where you're kind of sounding the note by just changing strings with hammer ons it's a technique that Eddie was very very good at and I could never understand how to use that technique within this specific lick because I was adding an extra note that required some picking. So I have now changed the solo or changed the way that I'm teaching the solo. Obviously, the performance that I've done is, you know, performances are a moment in time. I'm not one of these people who likes to go in and edit and doctor things or mime to pre-recorded stuff. So I've tried to get the solo as close as I can. I know some of you out there were going to go, you don't sound anything like Eddie Van Halen. I don't profess to. I just absolutely love playing his music and studying his guitar parts. I think there's just so much for us all to learn. So hopefully the performance is as close as I could get it to the original and uh, matches the, uh, the, the lesson breakdown. So let's kick things off with the intro lick. This is a Chuck Berry referenced lick. Eddie does this lick a lot. Like I said, we're playing around shape number one of the B minor pentatonic. We're going to start off by bending the ninth fret of the G up a whole tone. Okay, so you're bending and then striking the seventh fret of the top two strings. Now, the final time we sort of let all of the notes kind of ring into each other and you hold the unison bend instead of separating the bend from the top note. So it has this sort of slight tense sound. You let that bend down and then pull off to seven. And then we're going to hammer on back up to that nine, and then we're going to dip the bar and bend up a whole tone. So when I say dip the bar, I'm literally just depressing the whammy bar, scooping in to that string bend. Okay, so on to the next lick. Now, this is one of Eddie's falling down the stairs and landing on his foot feet licks. And I think that most guitar players have a go-to fast lick. You know, if someone puts a guitar in your hand, you always have that, that lick that you play. And this really is Eddie's lick that he played. It appears on many of his recordings or this style of pentatonic lick. And it's quite an awkward pentatonic lick to play. We start off by sliding in to the ninth fret of the G string. And then we're going to pick hammer on and pull off the 7, 10, and 7 on the B. And then you're going to hammer on to sound the ninth fret of the G. Now, that note's not very audible on the original, and I kind of wondered if it was actually played at all when I slowed it down. 
Um, but then it would mean you'd have to go kind of double that lick up, which felt awkward. So I think he was hammering on to the uh, to to the G strings. You get, and then we re-pick the seven hammer onto the 10 and pull off. And then we play the seven of the top E and then we hammer onto the 10 of the, the B, pull off to the seven and then hammer onto the nine on the G. So you get this. And then we repeat. Then we have this little descending figure. That's a really hard lick to play. So that lick starts off on seven on the B. We pick 10, pull off nine, pull off seven on the G. Hammer back onto nine on the G. Play seven on the B, seven on the G, and then we pull it down and bend it a whole tone. So that whole section. So put that together with the first Chuck Berry string bending lick. But that lick is right this time. Like I said, I taught that wrong before. I was adding an extra note here. So instead of... And that was not enabling me to do those uh, those hammer-ons from nowhere because I had to re-pick that B string. So I feel really good that I've actually learned that lick correctly and able to play the solo correctly and correct it for you guys. So uh, one more time. So now we're on to the tapping lick. We bend nine up, a whole tone on the G string. We tap 14 whilst holding that nine. Pull off, play 12. So that's 14, 12, 14, 16, 14, 12 you tap whilst holding that bend. We release the bend and pull off the seven and then hammer back on to nine. So let's put that together. Okay, and then to finish off, we're going to bend. But when we bend up that ninth fret, we're going to scoop in again. So you get... So you're just pressing the bar down as you bend. So... So now you release that bend. Pull off to seven. Hammer nine and then pull off to seven. But one more time, that whole section. Okay, for the next part of the lick, we're going to play the seventh fret G, and we're going to bend that by pulling it down, bend it by a whole tone, then re-pick it, and then play nine on the D and A. And then we're going to bend again, but release. And then play nine on the D, nine on the A, eight, seven, all on the A, and then drop down to five on the A and bend that by a whole tone by pulling it down. And then we slide, slide up to the nine and play 10, pull off to nine, play 10 on the bottom E, and then drop down 
and you're playing seven on the A and you bend that by a whole tone by pulling and then drop down to two on the A string. So let's just play through that last section with the, from the, uh, the string bend where you're pulling down on the G string. So when you go into that outro section, just, just to mention this, this was another thing that I've corrected myself. And again, this just shows that sort of other side of Ed's playing, how, in how unique he was that he would add these interesting and uh, sort of uncommon chord voicings into a commercial pop rock song, if you like. Um, there's that, uh, during that section... <laughs> We'd always slide down. I always used to play this. Which is just an F major 7 with an added sharp 11. And I was listening to it earlier. I went, hang on a minute. That's not right. Uh, he actually plays the first fret of the E, the open D. And uh, so he's, he's kind of playing the chord that I was playing. But instead of playing that F note on the D string, he just plays an open D. So he's got a sixth in there. Again, just, you know, his, his use of chords was just so unique. But obviously that's not part of the solo. I just wanted to add that other little bit of discovery. Like I said, since Eddie has passed away, I've just immersed myself into his music. I don't think there's a day or two days go past without me listening to some Van Halen and wanting to learn more and revisit songs and just learn those little uh, nuances and subtleties. So now let's play through the Panama solo in its entirety at a slow tempo. I'm going to come in from the chords, the last chords of the chorus that link us into the solo just to give you a little bit of a pickup and a sense of the timing. Here we go. One, two, three. <laughs> Okay, let's pick the tempo up slightly. One, two, three. So I hope you've enjoyed this lesson. And uh, as I said, this was my tribute to the man himself, to the great Eddie Van Halen. And uh, just wanted to remember him today. Obviously, this was always going to be, I don't know why I'm saying this, it was always going to be a weird day. It's not like he's a family member. It just goes to show how much he means to so many of us out there who play guitar and who listen to music and appreciate great music as well. So uh, yeah, this was my little tribute to Ed one year on after his passing. And like I said, it was kind of nice for me to revisit this song and make those corrections. Uh, re you know, I kind of was not happy 100% with some of the videos that I'd done in the past or the lessons, should I say, that I did on the DVDs. You know, they were pretty there, but the more you dive in to stuff, the more you start to discover the subtleties and other elements of a solo. And I've really done that with Van Halen in this last year, you know, since Eddie died. I've really sort of jumped in and been analysing and scrutinising his playing a lot deeper than I have before. As always, click the link in the description where you can download the tab and the guitar profile for free. And uh, if you don't already, please subscribe to the channel. That's it from me. Take care and I look forward to seeing you here very soon for more lessons. Bye for now.